He had an extremely acute ear, which gave him an uncanny sense of harmony, making his treatment of songs unique. He possessed an incredible memory, enabling him to play hundreds of his arrangements perfectly without the gift of sight. Who was George sharing? Here on Big on Bebop. He was born George Albert Shearing, August 13, 1919, in London, England. Shearing was the youngest of nine children. He was born blind to working-class parents. His father delivered coal, and his mother cleaned trains in the evening. He started to learn piano at the age of three and began formal training at Linden Lodge School for the Blind, where he spent four years. Though he was offered several scholarships, Shearing opted to perform at a local club, the Mason Arms in Lambeth, playing piano and accordion. He joined an all-blind band, Claude Bampton's Blind Orchestra, during that time and was influenced by the records of Teddy Wilson and Fats Waller. Shearing made his first BBC radio broadcast during this time after being befriended by Leonard Feather, with whom he started recording in 1937. In 1940, Shearing joined Harry Perry's popular band. Around 1942, he was recruited by Stefan Grappelli to join his band, which appeared at Hatchet's Restaurant in Piccadilly in the early years of the war, and subsequently toured as the Grappelli Swingettes from 1943 onward. Shearing won six consecutive top pianist melody maker polls. He was a member of the George Evans' Saxes and Sevens Band. When Shearing finally immigrated to the United States, one of his first performances was at the Hickory House. He performed with Oscar Pettiford's trio and led a jazz quartet with Buddy DeFranco. In 1948, he spent much of his time at the Three Deuces on 52nd Street. In 1949, he formed the first George Shearing Quintet, a band with Margie Hyams on the vibraphone, Chuck Wayne on the guitar, John Levy bass, and Denzel Best drums. This lineup recorded for Discovery, Savoy, and MGM, including the popular single, September in the Rain, which sold over 900,000 copies in the United States alone. And then his other big hit, Lullaby of Birdland. At this time, the novelist Jack Kerouac heard him play in Birdland, and later described the performance in his 1957 novel, On the Road, as his great 1949 days before he became cool and commercial. Shearing became known for a piano technique, locked hand style blended with guitar and vibes to give the group the Shearing sound, enormous commercial appeal worldwide. He maintained this sound and group for 30 years, which became a proving ground for many players that later became well known. On the vibraphone, Cal Jader, Gary Burton, Charlie Shoemake. On guitar, Chuck Wayne, Toots Tillman, and Joe Pass. On bass, Al McKibben and Andy Simpkins. On drums, Denzel Best, Colin Bailey, and Harvey Mason. In 1956, Shearing became a naturalized citizen of the United States. He continued to play with his quintet and recorded with Capitol until 1969. He created his own label, Sheba, and that lasted a few years. In his later career, in 1970, he began to phase out his by now predictable quintet and disbanded the group in 1978. One of his most notable albums during this period was The Reunion, 1976, made in collaboration with bassist Andy Simpkins and drummer Rusty Jones, and featuring Stefan Grappelli, the violinist with whom he had debuted as a sideman decades before. Later, Shearing played in a trio as a soloist and increasingly in a duo. In 1979, Shearing signed with Concord Records and recorded for the label with Mel Torme. This collaboration garnered Shearing and Torme two Grammys, one in 1983 and another in 1984. Shearing remained fit and active well into his later years and continued to perform, even after being honored with an Ivor Novello Lifetime Achievement Award in 1993. He never forgot his native country and in the last years would split his year between living in New York and England where he bought a house. He was knighted and became Sir George Shearing. He was the subject of This Is Your Life in 1992 when he was surprised by Michael Aspel while performing at Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club. 
In 2004, he released his memoirs, Lullaby of Birdland, which was accompanied by a double album, a musical autobiography. He then had a fall at his home and retired from regular performing. On February 14, 2011, Shering died from heart failure at 91. George Shering was the first British musician to exert a major influence on jazz. His quintet and style of the 50s was widely imitated. Shering's harmonically complex style, mixing swing, bop, and modern classical influences were very popular. George Shering, an influential bebop piano player. Mm -hmm.